you know, the other day I was someone I told Sam, uh, not Sam Tripoli, the other guy, uh, Steve Simone. I go, you see that girl? How old are you now? 48, whatever. I'm 53. You're never going to see that ever again. But you ever see like a nice looking couple now? Like he's 26 and she's 22 and they're both beautiful. She got perky little tits. She's banging her, her legs are suntan. And you're thinking to yourself, this little young savage must be going home tearing that pussy. I mean, you think back to your little 26-year-old in the afternoons where you take him home and rub him down and give him a good stab. And you come like three times, the whole fucking thing. That never happens no more. Like at this age, you look at that and go, that don't ever happen. You ever think of that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. The other day, all these guys like, look at that young girl. Look, and I'm going, look at her. Look at her. That'll never happen again in my world. Ever. What? I will never see a woman naked like that ever again. You don't say dick. <laughs> I do. That's how I live. I don't say dick. I don't know nobody. I don't, there's some days I don't even fucking shave. I leave the house and people, yeah, they don't know. It's tremendous to live that way. I don't say nothing. <laughs> I don't bother nobody. I go into Starbucks. I don't hear nothing. I don't know nothing. 150 and they can fight again in November. Right. Listen, I got caught without a license 10, 15 years ago in L.A. First time ever. I was talking on the phone. I got pulled over. Guy goes, where's your license? It didn't work that day. I went down to L.A. County. I stood in front of a judge, bop, bop, bop. The guy looked me straight in the face. He goes, you can pay 200 and come back with your license. Well, give me 550 and I don't want to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I did? You think I gave him 200 You gave him 550 No, I gave him 550 And in time, I got my license. Not with a right. gun to my head. That doesn't seem to make any sense I to me. I think some states look upon it like when I was a kid, the reason why my parents did numbers in the city is because they gave you a ticket in the city and a felony in Jersey. So wait a second, Joey. With all those degenerate motherfuckers in the tri-state area, what you're telling me is if you got arrested for gambling in New York City in the 70s and 80s, you got a ticket. The cops said, what are we going to do? Mm. I got a thousand of these motherfuckers yeah. popping apartment buildings all over the place. If you went to Harlem in the 70s, it was all little bodegas and everybody took action. Whether it was numbers, the Knicks, the Brooklyn number, the Roosevelt number. Remember, there's five numbers that come out in fucking New York. Did I ever tell you my grandmother got arrested? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. For one of the numbers. You run numbers. It's something that you do in the neighborhood. You become a part of it. You get accepted. Okay. For years, okay, everybody, well, I did, I don't know about you, once a month, let's, I'm, even if I over-exaggerate, once a month, somebody would pull me aside and go, hey, man, you know anybody who wants sneakers? What do you got? Yeah. I got Converse, okay, they usually go for 20, for you, I'll give them to you for seven. You don't even ask. You just know they're stolen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. going to embarrass you. Right. You come to my house. You're my friend, right, Joe? You come to my house. Joe, I don't. how you doing? I, this is kind of embarrassing. My cousin, he, he owns a store, and he's having a sale on TVs. I know it's 6 o'clock. It's a little late, but they're Trinitrons. They're 400 brand new. I need 100. They're in a box with a warranty. Christmas is coming. You don't <laughs> ask if they're stolen. That's a regular fucking day for a guy in Pittsburgh, Connecticut. Is that more of an East Coast thing where people come Florida. to you with an open van? Well, I'm not an open van. I'm talking not people, not strangers. I'm talking about Jamie. You know Jamie oh. three, four years, and Jamie's got a cousin that gets watches. Right. He gets the best watch in the world, Malacontar. <laughs> They're $52,000, but Jamie can get them for 22 cash. 22000 and 20 goes to the guy, and Jamie gets oh. two off the top. Are you going to torture Jamie and embarrass him? Like, so when did you get this? Am I going to get arrested? No. Give him the 22 grand and move on with your fucking life. Right? Is that bad karma? Who knows? Buy stolen goods? No, because Monte Concoa <laughs> gets the insurance back from you at, and they get it even higher. They get, oh. they get the retail back. They don't even get the wholesale so everybody makes out. Nice. If you take it off somebody's watch and put a gun to his head, then you got to bump into something bad. Right. The physical act of taking it from a person is different well, from no matter a what, truck there's something involved, but you don't have nothing to do with it. Somebody shows up at your doorstep. It's two weeks away from Christmas. What a surprise. You have the Nintendo game my son wants, or the PS3, or the PS4. How much are those things brand new? Uh, 300. How much? 300. 300 brand new. I show up at your house for a buck and a quarter with three of them. You're going to take all three of them. I know a dude who thought he was buying a stereo, but he's actually buying bricks. 
He got one of those stereo Right, back. but he's a fucking half a Momo. <laughs> he stopped at the street and bought it from a guy named Jamal. I had a guy, I was buying pet food. I pulled into this parking spot I got out, and this dude literally opened the van like he was going to take me in and fuck me. Like I was like some little kid he was about to scoop up out of the woods. Like it was a molester. And I'm like, what? Like, what do you, what do you got? And he's like, stereos. You want to buy stereo? I was like, this is the weirdest. He's he opened up the door like as people parked the car and like was literally like, go, hey man, you want some of this? I'm like, what? You're asking for trouble if you do business with one of those guys. Well, that's, that's the most obvious shit ever. You know, he's just randomly trying to sell a stereo to the back of a van. Like, now, what are these things that they do, and whatever, like the people go and they have what do they call junkets here? When I was Press a, junkets? No, 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 I'm sorry. The, the thing off the fucking five that you always see in the movies and all the fucking uh, Friday, they all go to a place and they, they, they buy stereos and Raider hats. It's, oh, it's swap, swap meet? Swap meet. Oh, like, yeah. Okay. Well, in, in L.A., it's a swap meet. In Jersey, they called, uh, what do they call Flea market. Something like that. Yeah. Because when I was a Thank kid, you, I used to go to where they used to do the... <laughs> The bicycles, whatever, the streetcar races, yeah. and next door to it, they had what, whatever it was called, and you'd go there, and they had pretty much shit that was stolen. It was just a festival, and they charged a uh, table fee, because everything was 50% off, even the sneakers, I remember. And then we found out that the guy would go to the fucking factory and jump over the fence and take all the, the sneakers that were mistakes. Oh. So the irregulars, mm -hmm. he, they would take those and just sell them at those f f swap flea meats. markets, swap meets. Oh. And then we found out we cut into his action. I swear mm -hmm. to God, we, we we cut into that action and the banaka action. Banaka? Remember, remember those tubes of banaka? Bre breath spray? They would throw thousands of them out with the little things, like the chemical was off. You start blinking too much. <laughs> <and shit. laughs> Like the chemical would be off, then it was pepper spray, <gasps> oh, like real no. pepper spray. Like people would spray it, and, and you see what happened. It's not uh. regular banaca. What is that tear gas? It was like the tear gas. <laughs> 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 and we had the Spanish kid that was half retarded, and we'd make him jump the fence, and we'd have thousands of tubes. Oh. And we'd sell them for 50 cents a piece on Monday in the sixth and seventh grade. Hilarious. But there was always three kids that complained. There was a little, like the chemical imbalance was off. <laughs> I love laughing at the fucking most absurd. Like when I saw a guy get hit on a snowball in New York City, like on a bus, like when people throw snowballs at each other. Right. And I was in the back of the bus, and this guy sat in the area where people get hit with snowballs, and the window was open. And I'm like, this motherfucker's gonna get hit. I'm gonna forget this. It was like deja vu. And all of a sudden, sitting in the back of the bus, and this guy's happy. He's talking in Italian. He was like a, a, a tourist. He was a tourist Italian. And it was the, the day after the storm in the East Coast where it's sunny out and that snow's melting, but kids are out. They don't have school, and they're throwing snowballs on Kennedy Boulevard. And this guy gets on the bus, doesn't close the window. Rule number one, as soon as you get on those Kennedy Boulevard buses, you close the fucking window, Jack. Because the, there's an area that it becomes like apocalypse now. Remember when they threw spears? Remember when they were on the lake and all of a sudden they got really fucked up? They started getting hit with spears. That's how it would get hit with snowballs. And I saw it, Joe Rogan. The guy sitting down, laughing, and all of a sudden you could hear the... <laughs> and it hit him right in the fucking face and knocked him off the chair. He was in the aisle seat and he went into the middle and he got up and he kept saying, Stop the bus. Stop the bus. <laughs> and I'm fucking howling with my little buddies in the back.